Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombly. Today, taking on Port Vale. Port Vale? It's not a real place, but we're going to play the game anyway. We're on professional skill level now, guys, so expect losing. Oh, the incredible injustice done to Buckminster Fuller's hair continues to be just, I mean, b why does he have to be our captain? Why do we have to look at it? It looks like he has mange. Uh, today's Today's uh, topic, there's Osiosi manager, by the way, arms folded. I do that, I do that move in real life a lot. Uh, today's topic comes from Josh, who donated the project for awesome. Thank you, Josh. How do you fight Nazis? Oh, great. I'm going to win friends and influence people with this video. A.K.A. the alt-right, A.K.A. fascists in 2017 when calling your senators doesn't work. Um, all right. Here we go, I guess. Fighting Nazis, A.K.A. So the first thing I'd say is like, uh, the vast majority of people who um, even uh, there are a lot of people who I think like identify with the alt-right who are not Nazis. Um, I think a lot of them are openly white, suprem white supremacist, but I don't think it like in the end does us many favors uh, to 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 engage in reductio ad Hitlerum. Now, there are like legit Nazis in the alt-right. If you ask them if they're Nazis, they'll say yes. Um, uh, and there are legit fascists. There are people with, or at least people with a lot of uh, sympathy for fascism or who think that America needs strong leadership or whatever. But the, most people who are participating in American politics, uh, you know, believe in democracy and, and the constitution and, and stuff. Um, I think, um, and I don't know that it, uh, like I, I, this is something I struggle with a lot, right? Like I don't know, I don't know how. I, I think part of part of fighting uh, fascism or fighting racism or fighting misogyny is refusing to normalize it. Um, I, and then I guess the other thing that I I look at is I look at things that have worked in the past. I looked at activism groups that have been effective. Um, the one that I think was most effective and comes to mind the most when I think about this stuff is uh, ACT UP, the organization in the 80s and 90s that uh, really did create, and that was a terrible cross, massive change when it came to AIDS activism and also when it came to, um, you know, getting people to uh, accept homosexuality, fighting for the rights of gay people to visit their uh, partners in, in hospital, stuff like that. I mean, it, this was... Early on in that, in that civil rights movement, ACT UP. Well, not early on. I guess there was there was a lot of there was a lot of activism that happened before ACT UP too. But when it came to the AIDS crisis, ACT UP was uh, passionate and effective despite being relatively small. And so I look to ACT UP uh, when it when I look for what makes um, organizations. Uh, work when it comes to activism. Another place I look is at the Tea Party because that also uh, was, I think, very effective. I think the Tea Party got a lot of people elected in the Republican Party and shifted the Republican Party way to the right despite being pretty small relative to the population. Um, and not and, and unlike ACT UP, which really had very specific kind of like targeted measurable goals, the Tea Party... Uh, didn't have, I, I mean, like, they wanted to see the, the ACA not pass. There were a bunch of, like, there were a bunch of goals, but they didn't have the same kind of specific agenda um, that, that ACT UP had, which I think is part of what made ACT UP very successful, is that they had specific policy uh, goals. And so when they got into the meetings with the, you know, the National Institute of Health, they were able to say, here's what we need to see you do differently. Um, in a way that didn't, in, in, it's by by knowing what they were talking about, by being ready for those meetings, when those meet, when they did succeed in getting those meetings, they it, it, it had a lot of success. Um, so I think I think that's part that that's part of their success story. Um, the Tea Party was a much more diffuse success story, um, and didn't have the same kind of just wasn't wasn't run the same way and. Uh, but I, I still think, like, move the needle a lot in American political life. Um, so the, I guess the first thing that I would say is, like, look to look to movements that have been successful and see why they succeeded uh, and, and try to think about why they succeeded. But that's not always super helpful. Get that ball in. Oh, so frustrating. So frustrating. That was just terrible, terrible play by 
OCRC manager. There's nobody to lay the blame on other than that. Um, and then there's the question of like, how much sense does it make to try to convince people that they are wrong? And how do you convince people that they are wrong? Because white supremacy is um, wrong. It's not just morally wrong, it's factually wrong. Uh, and so how do you convince people of that? I don't know, I don't think that's a good ball. Oh, it was, oh, it was a really, really good hold up play. And for a second there, I thought we were, thought we were on the edge of our first professional skill level goal against Port Vale. Would have been amazing. What could have felt better? Nothing, but it didn't happen. That's a great tackle. That's a great, that's a, just a, one man hugging another man, letting him know I'm here for you. By the way, I don't know who that is on our team that has no energy left, it's Parrot. Parrot. Mm, mm, mm. This is how we always give up goals, but we've got Shea LaBeouf in the back. I don't know how you convince people that they're wrong. Um, I, I think the, va the vast majority of people who, who voted for Donald Trump do not think of themselves as, as racists or as Nazis or, or as fascists. And I think um, when you, you know, like characterizing them that way ends up, um, it ends up making them not listen to you. Uh, it ends up making them think that you're wrong and stupid. And I, I, I but at the same time, like <clears throat> you don't want to, you don't want to normalize their, their political beliefs and call them something that they're not or, or, or pretend that they're moderate when they aren't. And that's the, um, that's the conundrum in which, I kind of find myself. I mean, I, I'm, I'm personally politically, or I used to be anyway, quite moderate, but I feel like the, uh, the, 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 the sort of like conversation in American political life shifted so much to the right, uh, since the George W. Bush administration that, um, I have stayed in the same place, but become like, according to the people who uh, mischaracterize my beliefs, I think, like a Marxist or a communist or whatever, which I hear a lot. Like, it's that's always in uh, in Vlogbrothers um, comments, you know, like, it's so obvious that these guys are Marxists. And I'm like, I don't think you've read Marx. Because, uh, like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, um, but I don't feel like that, like, having, hearing my opinions characterized as Marxism does not, like, make me want to engage further in the conversation but people are in such echo chambers that like maybe maybe that's the only way to penetrate the echo chamber or maybe it's not maybe maybe it doesn't matter what you characterize their beliefs as because maybe they won't um they won't hear you regardless i do want to take issue with one thing that that in 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 josh's um thing uh in his topic which was when calling your senators doesn't work so i i think that calling your senators does work um, I think it works really, really well, actually. Um, it doesn't work perfectly, and I don't think it leads to specific changes in legislation very often, uh, but I do, think it, I, I do think that it works. I think that uh, senators and congresspeople, I mean, I've talked to, I've talked to elected officials about this. Um, I think that hearing from uh, people who you represent is a really, really important thing, and it's really effective. And the vast majority of elected leaders like hearing from people they represent because it helps them to understand the issues and concerns of the people they represent. Uh, and so I don't, I don't buy the argument completely that it doesn't work. Now, it, it does not, like, it's not as effective as being a senator yourself <laughs> um, in terms of making change happen. Uh, but I think it does work. I think the reason we're not going to see the ACA repealed is because people of people calling their senators and Congress people. Um, and, uh, and, and I think it's especially when people who haven't traditionally get there, stay there, finish it, finish it. Oh, oh, almost our first goal in professional skill level. But now it's a counterattack from the Port Vale Valians. Villains. Oh, that's what they should call themselves. The Port Vale Valens. The Port Vale. The Port Vale. I don't know. Porters. I don't know. I'm not very good at this game. Uh, either naming things or the actual game of FIFA. That, however, is a nice ball. Put into a very good spot, but he's not quite fast enough. He's been tackled in the box. 
Oh, for the love of God, I was tackled from behind in the box. What do I have to do to get a penalty around here? Good Lord. Oh, come on. So I'm to make substitutions here in the 88th minute. I should have made substitutions earlier. Lyle Taylor was too tired. Bring on England's greatest lyric poet. Nope. Barnett, who is not at a very good game. Uh, we're taking off Polion and Lyle Taylor, and we're bringing on mm, Frankenstein. I don't know why. I don't. I, we should have made these substitutions a long time ago, and then we would have scored that goal because T.S. Eliot puts that in the back of the net 10 times out of 10. There's no question. There's no doubt in my mind. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Shea LaBeouf. So I, I think that like, and I, I also think that organizing helps. Like I think that I think that protesting helps. I think, oh, I'm offside. I think that stuff works. Wait, I'm not offside. Yes, I am. Why, why would you wait so long to make the call? You got me dream. Um, I think that that stuff works. I also think that voting works. And so I think ultimately, ultimately the way that, the way that you affect change in your community is by voting, by talking to your elected leaders, by remembering that you don't just vote uh, once every two years or four years. You vote every time you make any kind of political action, and also uh, by talking to your friends and family and reaching out across difficult borders to have difficult conversations i think can also affect change although i don't know and i am happy to listen because i feel very lost in this new world in which we find ourselves speaking of lost afc wimbledon didn't quite lose nil nil to port vale thanks for watching best wishes